returning to their home schools. Superintendent Marlon Creasy says the program just wasn't working. We discovered that when the students leave Riley and go back to the regular schools, uh, the dropout rate approached 90 percent. And that is simply, uh, we had to come up with a better approach to what we're doing on the alternate program. Since Riley will be closing its doors at the end of this school year, education officials are finding alternative solutions for the students who attend. When students return to their home schools, they'll still be getting special attention. In fact, they'll be getting more in-class hours in order to help them pass their graduation exam. The students will go from a five-period day to a seven-period day on middle school and high school. We see that as a tremendous plus, and they'll also be able to, to work in extremely small groups. For News Center, I'm Kylie Bernardo. Creasy says those who work at Riley will be transferred to other Muncie schools. Right now, no one knows what the Riley building um, are, is being used for in the future. Get ready to turn on the fun. The new Muncie area Best Buy is using new employees to help prepare for Friday's grand opening. Best Buy already has almost 2,000 stores in North America, including 13 others in Indiana. The new store will open this Friday and will have, the grand, and will have grand opening events the whole weekend. Some of the promotions will include specials and discounts all weekend long, an autograph session with Spider-Man that takes place on Saturday, and a gift bag giveaway on Sunday. From our partners at the Ball State Daily News, here are your tomorrow's headlines tonight. The College of Communication, Information, and Media hosted the second university-wide soapbox for students today. Students could voice their opinions about anything that was on their mind. Pro-life protesters were on campus also today. Demonstrators took to the streets with posters and signs expressing their point of view. Ball State also hosted a diversity forum today. Students could listen and actively participate in conversations. Find out more about these stories and more in tomorrow's edition of the Ball State Daily News. And Ben Piney joins us now with a look at our weather. That's right. It got cold today. It was warm the, yesterday. I have seen a sign of spring. I saw some tulips coming up, but it's been really cold other than that. And really rainy this this season but uh, there might be a warm-up coming up I'll tell you more about that but first we got tonight's forecast mostly clear tonight a low of 26 really cold degrees tonight and here's your a little weather trivia I got for you here if you if you were in a haboob what weather event would be would you be experiencing a a blizzard B a dust storm C a thick fog or D a drought and I'll have the answer for that coming up what do you guys think I'm going with B B? I think I'm going to have to go with B also. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm uh, Maybe C. Let's try C. She's okay. going to follow my lead. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> I think Julian knows, so I'm going to copy him. In Indiana's school, water has failed a quality test. A test is shown 10 times. The acceptable, We're sorry, we're experiencing a little technical difficulties, but hopefully we'll get these lights on here soon. Um, the school has failed. Uh, a test has shown that 10 times the acceptable, acceptable limit of gasoline um, of a gasoline additive in Lincoln Elementary School's water supply. The school is located about 100 miles south of Chicago. Hand washing at the school has been banned because of the contaminated water. We have the lights back up now. In the Roseland School's cafeteria, students are eating with plastic utensils from plastic foam plates. Water used to prepare the food and wash serving dishes from bottles. Good job, Melissa. Governor Frank O'Bannon says he's closer to calling a special legislative session to work out the state's growing financial problems. The governor said today he may call a special session even without brokering a deal with leading lawmakers beforehand. O'Bannon says the first, he first wants to speak with legislative leaders next Tuesday before he makes a decision. Nearly two years after an Indiana University student vanished during a motor morning bicycle ride, the search for the clues, the search for clues into her disappearance continues. Tuesday, divers and a search team that included FBI agents searched a creek near Lake Monroe after receiving a tip about 19-year-old Jill Bierman's disappearance. Authorities declined to discuss the results of the search and asked the media not to report the exact location of the search site to protect their ongoing investigation. For those of you trying to lose weight, there may be financial help for you. That's what the IRS says. It will begin letting taxpayers claim their weight losses as a medical deduction. An official from Weight Watchers International says that this will help open the gate for everyone to be at a healthier rate. Not rate, weight. In 1998, the National Institute of Health estimated that over 97 million American adults were overweight. An Indianapolis woman has been arrested for the theft of 1,000 pieces of mail. Marion police say they recently spotted suspicious mail addressed to other people in the backseat of Cynthia Matthews' car during a traffic stop. 
Matthews was arrested yesterday on preliminary counts of forgery and theft. A postal inspector says the mail apparently was taken from residential mailboxes on the city's north side. And coming up on New Center at 9.30, Andrea Yates files an appeal in a Texas court. And a U.S. airline calls hundreds of employees back to work. Also, U.S. citizens rescued from Bethlehem find out why they're finally allowed to leave the West Bank. Stay tuned. The Houston mother serving a life sentence for drowning her children is hoping for a new trial tonight. Just this afternoon, the attorney for Andrea Yates filed an appeal. Her attorney says there are several reasons for the appeal, including constitutional issues that need to be addressed. Her attorney hopes something can be worked out that would incorporate continued medical health care for her. American Airlines says it's recalling 208 laid-off pilots due to gradual increase in air travel. Traffic has picked up in the months since the September, September 11th terrorist attacks. A spokeswoman for American Airlines says the pilots will begin training sessions on May 1st. Last September, parent company AMR announced it would cut 20,000 jobs at American Eagle and TWA, which has since been folded into America. American. Last December, American Airlines recalled 800 reservation clerks and council plans to lay off another 200 pilots. International activists, including Americans and Britons, are being evacuated from Bethlehem. All are members of the International Solidarity Movement who entered the West Bank over the weekend to establish unity with the Palestinian people. The group asked to be rescued from the escalating violence. A convoy of U.S. federal police picked up one group while armored vehicles in, in Italy, in, from the Italy embassy rescued others. The Bush administration is saying relatively little about Abu Zubad, Zubada, Zubada, arrested in Pakistan last week. But sources say information found in safe houses after Zubaida's arrest is proving very useful. Kelly Arena has the details. The captured al-Qaeda leader, Abu Zubeda, is talking. And according to a highly placed U.S. government source, he is providing some limited information to interrogators. Here's a man who knows about additional terrorist acts. Here's a man who trained people to do this. What's more, some officials believe the U.S. may have interrupted a planned terrorist attack, although a specific target has not yet been identified. That learned by investigators as they go through materials found during last week's raids in Pakistan, during which Zubeda and others were arrested. Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld denied reports the U.S. is considering handing over Zubeda to another country where investigators could possibly use harsher techniques in their interrogations. We are responsible for his detention and we intend to remain responsible for his detention. And that, that uh, means exactly what it means, that, that we, the United States of America, are responsible for him. Zubeda is wanted by not only the United States, but by Jordan, which indicted him for his alleged role in a thwarted millennium bombing plot. Officials still will not say where Zubeda is being held. Government sources say one place he won't be taken, at least for now, is Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, where he might be able to communicate with other detainees. Officials say while the president has not made a final decision, it is expected Zubeda will be tried by a U.S. military tribunal. Zubeda is a top al-Qaeda leader, said to be in charge of operations and responsible for recruiting new members. He's uh, someone who could pull the strings, who could coordinate highly complicated uh, operations in different countries and uh, guide them towards uh, uh, the execution of a terrorist plot. In a briefing with reporters, FBI Director Robert Mueller acknowledged Zubeda's arrest, quote, assists in helping prevent another terrorist attack. But he didn't offer any details. The FBI director added the threat of terrorism remains high, stressing that al-Qaeda members who have not been caught still have the capability and the desire to carry out attacks. Kelly Arena, CNN, Washington. Well, Ben, uh, weather's coming up after the break. What do you mm -hmm. have in store for us? Well, it's going to be cold tonight. I love 26 degrees. How long will that chill be in the air? We'll have that and uh, the rest of your forecast coming up after the break.
Well, it's still a chilly spring for us out there. We even had a flurry today, a high of 43 for us. Normally that high is at uh, 56, we're 13 below that today. Uh, Muncie, we, and Muncie, Fort Wayne, Evansville all shared that high, highest degrees today at 43, Indianapolis at 42. Not a very big range in temperatures around the state. Mostly clear conditions for us tonight, temperature of 33 degrees. Humidity is at 77% will be clear tonight with northeast winds at five, 0 to 5 miles per hour. Looking at the uh, satellite, we got clouds up in uh, northern uh, Canada and uh, Wisconsin and even some in northern Indiana there. But we've got high out west and that will be giving us some clear skies coming up. And our radar, we can see underneath these clouds, if we can bring that radar up, there we go. There's still a wintry weather up north, and uh, we're not going to have any of that for tonight. That's going to move up to, towards the east. And we can zoom in a little closer on the showers in Indiana. We can see the showers in northern Indiana. They're having an, uh, lots of snow up there, but we are in the clear for tonight. And uh, tonight we're going to see high pressure for us out west, and that's going to be building in, coming towards us later on this week. And this system that gave us the rain earlier yesterday is all out into, uh, off um, out of America and off the coast. But tonight's lows are going to be in the 20s. We can see this dip in the temperatures all throughout the United States and uh, teens up north and uh, 40s down south in Texas. So cool around much of the nation. And tonight we're going to have partly cloudy skies, a low of 26 chilly degrees, winds out of the northeast at 0 to 5 miles per hour. And tomorrow night we're going to have high pressure in our area, clear skies, but still cool temperatures. But that we'll have uh, warmer temperatures coming up later in the week. I'll tell you more about that tomorrow morning. Partly cloudy, temperature of 30 degrees, still below freezing in the morning. So keep that coat on for your morning uh, way to school or work. And tomorrow's high is 40 degrees for much much of the uh, Midwest and Central Plains. 50s down a little bit south, 70s in Florida, and you've got to go way south into Mexico to get into the 80s for highs tomorrow. Tomorrow mostly cloudy, high of 43 for us. Winds out of the west northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And tomorrow, or our three day forecast, Friday a high of 45. Saturday a little warm up coming our way, 52 for a high, low of 34. Sunday we've got a good chance for some lightning and thunder. So high of 51 and a low of 51 for that. And here's our trivia. Here's your answer coming up. If you were in a haboo, what weather event would you be experiencing? The answer B, a dust storm. Julian, I think you got it today. That is correct. That I think you're correct. even for our uh, trivia. So. One and what? What is it? Two and one, one and one? One to one. One so to far. one. Oh, okay. no. All right, right now, we're exp experiencing some technical difficulties, but we're going to introduce Margie Z. Hart anyway. Margie, what's going on in the sports world? Well, um, it's not a little dark in the sports right? world, that's for sure. But, uh, oh, and the Lord said, let there be light. And there we <laughs> Um we have news on, oh, there we go. There we, go. we have news on P. Jackson and Lonnie, Lonnie Jones. They are in a tournament, plus all sorts of other news. Baseball's coming up. Sports is next. The Ball State basketball team season may have ended a couple weeks ago, but two players are in a special tourney this week. Seniors Lonnie Jones and Patrick Jackson are playing in the Portsmouth Invitational in Virginia today through Saturday. The tournament is for 64 of the nation's best NCAA seniors who are looking for a career in the NBA. Jackson set the Ball State career record for three-pointers with 202, while Jones set the single-game block record for cards this season with 89. The Ball State baseball team is also in action this week, traveling to Purdue this afternoon before coming home for a weekend series with Toledo. Ball State looking to move up in the standings, but not today. Cards lose by a score of 8-1. to one. They take on Toledo in the single game on Friday, a double hitter on Saturday, and will wrap it up with a game on Sunday. The cards are led by junior pitcher Brian Bullington, who is now Ball State's all-time strikeout leader with 264. Keep in mind, he still has all of next season and next year to build on that record. And the Pirates were in town this afternoon in New York. There was a line, bottom of the first, Elgato, Alfonso hits in an RBI, single to left field, hitting in Roboter Al Alomar, 1-0 Mets, later Pokey Reese for the Pirates, single, Young, 
Young tags up and goes in tying the game one all. Then the Pirates start in the top of the six with Reese again, hitting a two-run shot, making it 3-2 Pittsburgh. Pirates go on to win this one easy, 5-3. to three. And Mets catcher Mike Piazza was fined three grand today for, quote, aggressive conduct. Last week at a spring training game against the Dodgers, Piazza pulled out the shirt of pulled on the shirt of Dodger pitcher Guillermo Mota after he hit Piazza in the back with a 3-0 pitch. There was a shoving match between the two which led to the infamous clearing of the benches in baseball. And taking a quick look at some other games in interest, Chicago and Cincy battling it out. The Cubs scored four in the top of the fourth and four more right now in the sixth. Todd Hundley and Sammy have gone all the way. And Colorado beat it up on St. Louis 6-1 in the fifth. Larry Walker with a three-run job. And finally, Houston hammering the Brewers 8-2 in the sixth. Darrell Ward with a three-run homer in the fourth for the Astros. And former Ball State women's basketball coach is now a Terp. Former head coach Brenda Oldfield accepted the head position at the University of Maryland after only one year at the Big Ten School in Minnesota. While at Minnesota, she turned around a team with a losing record into one that finished the season 22-8. and She spent two years with winning records here at Ball State, with her best finish being 21-9. and Coach Oldfield talked about what she wants with the Terrapins. James player summed it up the best when he said, anybody who has ever played would love to win a national championship. That is why I am here. She does want to win a national championship. Coach Oldfield has signed with Maryland for six years. And the Pac-10 conference leading scorer has declared himself officially uh, in for the NBA draft. Stanford junior Casey Jacobson averaged 22 points a game with this season, with some scouts calling him a possible lottery pick. He is not signed with an agent, leaving himself open for a return as a senior at Stanford next season. And the newest expansion team in the NFL has announced who it will be for the first pick of this year's draft. Fresno State quarterback Dave David Carr will more than likely be a Houston Texan. Carr has been one of the most watched quarterbacks in the past weeks. He finished fifth in the Heisman race and won the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award for the nation's top QB. Talks between Carr and the team are to resume before the draft on April 20th and 21st. And you know, I can't believe the, the NFL draft is already coming around. You know, before you know it, they're they're going to be practicing again, and you know, it just seems like their season ended. Right, that's true. They yeah. just finished the Columbine, right? Correct. Uh, the, when they go to Indianapolis. Right, right. That's right. that's like where that. they were watching Car a lot. Right. All right, so. thanks, Margie. Coming up after the break, Ben Piney will be in with a, your weather recap. And a recent study shows that Americans are becoming more and more rude. We'll tell you why after the break. Cell phone out shopping wherever. <laughs> A new survey finds that most Americans think their fellow citizens are, well, just plain rude. In fact, the number in the public agenda poll reveals the epidemic of bad manners. A lot of people think that the problem is only getting worse. Bruce Morton reports. On the road, on the cell phone, out shopping, wherever, eight out of ten Americans say the lack of respect and courtesy is a serious problem, and six out of ten say it's gotten worse in recent years. New York City bus driver. Rudeness has gotten much worse. 73 percent say we used to be more polite, but when? Where are we rude? 58 percent of the people in the polls say they often see drivers who are aggressive and reckless. There are people that'll cut you off. There are people that'll swag in front of you and this and that, especially on these highways. People cited rudeness on cell phones. All agents are currently assisting other customers. 84% strongly agreed it was frustrating to call a company and just get recordings. Majorities said they'd seen clerks being rude to customers and customers being rude to clerks. Companies trying to save money, some said, and therefore too little help in the stores. Seven out of 10 said parents behave inappropriately at their kids' sports events. Remember the death of a parent in a hockey practice fight? Littering is a problem, 55% of those polled said. What's wrong? Values, some said, what parents teach their kids. And the media, 
Yes, the media. We should be able to hold two contradictory thoughts in our head, at least all of us except for Brian Stein, who seems to be only able to hold one thought. But we should be able, at one and the same time, to have... And it may just be the stress of daily life nowadays. All being busy, being crowded, being caught in traffic, uh, everybody's trying to do too much. Did the terrorist attacks last September make people more caring and thoughtful? Three quarters of those polled said yes, but only about a third thought it would last. We asked about uh, politics, and they even thought that in Washington, uh, the uh, elected officials were a little uh, uh, kinder and less engaged in partisanship. But again, uh, most Americans did not think that is, is going to last, and a number of Americans think that has already passed. Yeah, kinder, permanently, forget about it. Bruce Morton, CNN, Washington. It's shocking to me. Uh, I, I, I haven't really noticed people being rude at Ball State, so I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, we're all nice here, even when it's cold outside. We've had, it's been hard to come by those warm temperatures this spring. Uh, tonight it's going to be cold again, 26 degrees for a low. A north winds out northeast at 0 to 5 miles per hour. Tomorrow morning, partly cloudy skies. Temperatures are still cool, 30 degrees. Winds out of the northwest at 5. And mostly cloudy skies tomorrow, high of 43 degrees. Winds out west northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. For that three day, Friday we have a high of 45, mostly clear all day. Saturday, a high of 52. Warmer temperatures coming our way, finally looking like spring. High of 51 on Sunday. All right, looking forward to that weekend warm-up. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ben. Thanks a lot, man. And thank you for joining us for New Center at 9.30. I'm Melissa Cordell. And I'm Julian Grace. New Center 43 is an official CNN Student Bureau. Be sure to tune in tomorrow night for New Center at 5.30. Good night. Good night.